Welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss. And in our previous podcast, we discussed Alfred Wegener and his continental drift hypothesis. Now, although Alfred Wegener passed away in the winter of 1930, the story continues on, and it continues with a different theme. And that theme that we're going to be discussing today is seafloor spreading, or magnetic reversals and seafloor spread. So when we talk about the seafloor, the first question I'm going to ask is, how do, how do we know what the seafloor looks like? You know, before we had sophisticated equipment, we would find the depth of the ocean and determine ocean features by literally, like, lowering down ropes with weights on them and getting depth of a single point. As you can imagine, this process of, of mapping the ocean floor was just extremely tedious and really only produced some pretty you know, vague maps, as you can see here on the right. The first printed map of oceanic bathymetry produced uh, from 1836. Well, this is the kind of technology that was being utilized during Alfred Wegener's time. Now, granted, Wegener lived in the early 1900s, but this technology was still how we were getting images for the ocean floor during his time. Well, contrast dropping a rope down into the water with a weight on it and determining how deep the ocean is to sonar. As early as the 1930s, um, we were using single point sonar or single beam sounders to use bathymetry maps or maps of the ocean floor. And more modern ways of uh, measuring, uh, including sonar, would be multi-beam sonar. So you can really get a, a nice three-dimensional image of the ocean floor. So the scientific community, scientific community began mapping the ocean floor, but it wasn't really until World War II that we began compiling and gathering tremendous amounts of information and data about the ocean floor for obvious security reasons and military purposes. So as a result of all this information gathered during World War II, the scientific, scientific community could utilize the information of the maps of the ocean floors. So now let's go over um, three of the most common seafloor features that we found after we mapped the ocean floor. And before I go any further, I just want to mention that I've used the word bathymetry a few times, and that's simply just the study of underwater depth. So we're getting these images, and that's bath bathymetry. So the first feature I'll go over are the mid-ocean ridges. Okay, so here is the mid-ocean ridge. And the mid-ocean ridges rise up high above the deep sea floor as a long chain of mountains. Okay, so there are the ridges. And the next feature we'll discuss are the trenches. Trenches are typically right along the side of continents, and I'll just outline a few of them here. Um, there's more on the Earth, but just in this image are just a few of them right here. All right, so trenches are extremely deep because trenches are actually points at which the ocean floor, believe it or not, subducts and goes underneath continental crust. And so at that point, it actually gets very deep. So again, trenches, very deep uh, parts of the ocean where ocean floor is actually moving underneath the continents. So those were the trenches. And the third ocean feature are these abyssal plains, these just deep blue areas um, where just the ocean is very deep, and um, those are called the abyssal plains. So now here's where it gets kind of, kind of interesting and crazy. So if we take a really close look at a section of the ocean called the mid-ocean ridge, okay, so let's shrink that down and Bring this over here. So if we look closely at the mid-ocean ridge and we use equipment that allows us to detect magnetic polarity, what we find is this crazy reversing pattern where right here in the middle at the ridge, the polarity is a positive polarity. Well, and just what that means is that the rock at that place is aligned with the current magnetic north. Okay. Then if we look further out, if we look just to the band on either direction, either side of the ridge, we find a negative polarity, meaning that that rock is frozen in time, and it thinks that the North Pole is actually in the South Pole. And then if you go further out along each side, you see the same thing again, that now 
it's positive polarity, and the rock is now pointing to the North Pole. And then on each side, South Pole. And then on each side, North Pole. And each side, South Pole. And so you get this pattern. And that pattern just does not scream random at all. That pattern screams, this makes sense, this is orderly. So there must be something going on here. The formation of these rocks must be occurring in such a manner that the rocks are being created at the ridges or formed at the ridges and then getting pushed away from that central ridge. So what does that mean for our ocean features again? Well, again, that means that wherever you see a mid-ocean ridge, that is where the Earth's crust is actually forming and then being pushed away from that ridge. So that's huge. This seafloor spreading is what Wagner didn't have. He needed a mechanism for how the continents could move. Here's the mechanism. The seafloor gets ripped open at this point and pushes outward, dragging the continents and pushing the continents along with it. How sure are we that this is happening? Well, let's use another method to look at the ocean floor. Let's look at the radiometric age. Seafloor is actually an igneous rock composed of primarily basalt. And we can use radiometric age dating, such as our uranium to lead activity that we learned about. We can use that type of information to find out how old the ocean floor is. And the age of the ocean floor happens to be that if you look, the, the youngest ocean floor is the red or the, the bright orange. And so the youngest floor is right along these mid-ocean ridges, which makes sense with what we were thinking, that if the ocean is being ripped apart at that point, that should be the youngest floor. And then symmetrically, as you go away from the mid-ocean ridges, wherever you're looking, you're going to look at older and older ocean floor, with the very oldest floor being some of these pockets of blues that you find in different places of the, in the oceans right along the continents. So the youngest floor is the middle of the oceans of the trenches, the oldest seafloor is along the continents. And the very, very, very oldest ocean floor that we can find is only 180 million years old, which in billion years is 0 0.18 billion years. And remember that the Earth is actually 4.56 billion years old. So the ocean floor is extremely young compared to the age of the Earth. And ocean floors, these mid-ocean ridges, are the only places on the planet where new earth or crust is formed. And that'll end our podcast on magnetic reversals and seafloor spreading.